just like any other line, tube, or drain in the ICU, the PA catheter needs to be monitored daily for function, placement, and when it will be appropriate to remove. The best way to avoid complications, which we will discuss in the next lesson, is to be vigilant and systematic about monitoring. Patients with PA catheters should have a daily chest X-ray to evaluate the location of the catheter tip inside the chest. A portable chest X-ray is sufficient. ICU patients often have multiple lines and tubes in place, so the first step is to identify the PA catheter. Start at the point of entry, which is most often the right IJ. Here we see a radio-opaque tube starting to the right of the trachea as expected. Follow the course of that tube, which should proceed into the cardiac silhouette at the superior vena cava, RA junction, into the right atrium, the right ventricle, and then curve upward through the RV outflow tract into the pulmonary artery. In this example, the tip of the catheter is in the left pulmonary artery. In patients with multiple devices or even overlying ECG wires, the middle of the chest can be crowded so carefully follow the course of the tube that you are certain is the PA catheter. Once in the main PA, the catheter should curve either to the right into the right branch of the PA or the left into the left PA branch. The curve of the catheter is designed to direct it into the right main PA, so that will be the most likely location, shown in this image. The most critical thing to evaluate with this x-ray is the location of the tip itself. Ideally, the tip should be pointed horizontally, while not curling downward, and should be located no more than 4 to 5 centimeters from the midline. You can approximate this by dividing each lung field into three vertical slices. The tip of the PA catheter should end at the outer edge of the medial slice. You might be wondering, why does this matter? Remember, we want the tip of the catheter to be in the proximal right or left main pulmonary artery. If inserted further into a small branch, you risk trauma to the endothelium and dampening of the pressure tracing. If the catheter tip is too proximal, it can retract from the PA into the RV and cause arrhythmias. There is a second way to check the location of the catheter tip and correlate it with the chest X-ray image. Evaluating the pressure waveform gives us clues about the location and function of the catheter. The tip should be resting in the main PA so the waveform should be an arterial waveform with a diacrotic notch, as shown here. If the waveform is not as expected, bedside evaluation can help to troubleshoot. First, set the monitor to enlarge the PA catheter waveform. Next, level the pressure transducer with the patient's left atrium in the armpit and zero the system. Finally, Consider whether the tip of the catheter is resting against the wall of the pulmonary artery. In that case, flushing with saline can dislodge the tip. Check the waveform again. If it is a lower amplitude venous waveform like this, it could be that the catheter tip is in the wedge position, even with the balloon deflated. This would indicate the tip is too far into the vasculature, and with the balloon deflated, you can withdraw by 1 to 2 centimeters until the PA waveform reappears. You can also gently inflate the balloon with 0.5 to 1 milliliter of air, but only if you meet no resistance. However, it is critical to never force the inflation of the balloon. Resistance to balloon inflation could indicate that the tip of the catheter is in a small PA branch, and forcefully inflating the balloon could lead to PA rupture. It is preferable to withdraw the catheter tip in 1 to 2 centimeter increments, even if you pull back into the RV and have to then refloat the catheter into the correct position. My practice is to evaluate the catheter position each morning with a chest x-ray and evaluation of waveform at the bedside. Whenever the catheter position is changed, a new chest x-ray should be obtained. Any change in the waveform such that it no longer resembles an arterial waveform should be evaluated with the bedside maneuvers I described, as well as an x-ray. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. 
So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.